Hi, I'm Ralph Bass. I've written several uh, books, one of which has been on counseling and uh, marriage and family counseling in particular. But I have a tab on my webpage that just deals with counseling and does not address one of my books. But I want to talk to you about it because it has a lot of important material on it. For instance, there's an article on the philosophy of counseling. Now, in fact, there are at least four major counseling philosophies available to the Christian and uh, literally hundreds of subdivisions off of these. And I'd just like to mention them to you because I want you to be aware of the options and I want you to be aware that many of the options are rather poor options. Number one is the philosophy of psychology. It's the uh, humanist or the uh, secularist approach to problem solving, uh, to try to solve a problem without addressing the scripture. Uh, and uh, that is an approach that, uh, unfortunately, many Christians will go uh, subscribe to. Or they'll go to a standard secular psychologist and uh, they will ask this person to uh, help them solve the problem. And this is in defiance of the scripture which tells us not to walk in the way of the ungodly or sit at the feet of uh, those that uh, have no true faith in Jesus Christ. So, uh, that is one option. Now, many uh, Christians won't uh, consider that option. Uh, they will look at uh, what is sometimes called pastoral counseling. Now, pastoral counseling has been around a long time, especially in the liberal church. And uh, it will uh, mediate the... Uh, the uh, counseling philosophies of unsaved men like Carl Rogers and other liberal and neo-orthodox uh, neo uh, theologians. And uh, as a result, the evangelical believer is uh, getting secular uh, material that is wrapped in the uh, garments of Christianity and very often not being necessarily theologically astute uh, believes they're getting Christian counseling, when in fact they're getting nothing of the kind. Then there are those that are a little bit more aware, a little bit more interested in quote-unquote evangelical counseling. And so they'll hook up with a, a counselor, something like Clyde Naramore, uh, who promotes this, uh, Freudianism, or some other eclectic uh, Christian who grabs material from the secular and unsaved uh, philosophers and counselors of this uh, world and baptizes them with a few Bible verses. But being an evangelical, uh, this uh, and not a liberal, this man uh, uh, certainly sounds far more trustworthy than, than do others. Uh, and for that reason, perhaps, is far more dangerous. And then the last I want to mention to you is the... Uh, what I call the Orthodox Christian position, which looks upon uh, the Word of God as uh, having everything the believer needs for life and godliness, as specified in 2 Peter 1, 3. And uh, this is the position that uh, the uh, biblical counselor, the true biblical counselor takes, that uh, all the, that, uh, the uh, person needs for life that is, salvation, is found in the scripture. All that the person needs for godliness, that is, sanctification and, and, and a Christian walk, is found in the scriptures. And so he's able to use the word of God skillfully in order to bring uh, the Christian to the point where he understands God's uh, demands on his life and uh, the, uh, the help that is found in the word of God to direct his paths. So that's just one paper that I have on uh, the counseling uh, page. But I want to mention some others in a little bit less detail. Uh, I have a history of counseling. Uh, this is interesting. It gives you some context. that allows you to put uh, the counseling movement today inside of a, a broader historical context so that you can get an idea of what is sound and what is not sound uh, counseling. Uh, I deal with the question of why do we even have counseling in the first place in another paper and uh, deal with uh, a paper called The Moral Model, the Foundation for True Biblical Counseling. 
have a paper on why Christians don't go to their pastors for counseling. Now, it's sad and true. When I was a counselor, I worked at a counseling clinic, and I would have believers come in for counseling, and I'd ask them why they wouldn't go to their pastor for counseling. They gave me many interesting answers. And so this uh, paper will confront those uh, topics of why Christians just refuse to go to their pastors for counseling. Then I have a paper on um, why pastors don't counsel and won't counsel. Uh, this is particularly sad because uh, a pastor is supposed to do the work of pastoring. Now, counseling is just a, a synonym for pastoring. And so people that call themselves pastors but won't counsel are really nothing more than uh, preachers. They're not true pastors. And... Uh, you can see that this, I find this most disturbing, that, pa that so-called pastors will give a business card to some counselors, some psychologists, that's even worse, and send uh, their co congregation off to be ministered to by people who are often far from orthodox in their Christianity, if Christian at all. And so I strongly believe that uh, the, the counselor and the pastor ought to be uh, and are one in the same office. Now, I have papers on topics like anger, depression, fear, worry, and that can be quite helpful to you. And I have a very important paper on how to change. In fact, uh, when it's all said and done, if we don't change, then we're going to stay with the same problems we've always had. And uh, that's going to result in a very unhappy life. So ultimately, counseling is about how to help people change, to be something different, to put off Adam, to put on Christ, to do it successfully, and to uh, see problems resolved in the life of the believer. And in addition, there I have many counseling case studies that you might find interesting, and I encourage you to check out this section on the web page and read some of these articles, and it may help you get a, a clear perspective on how you need to approach counseling in your life. I thank you. Bye.